childhood friend of the Zenith chapter looking for the hint a massive snake that was releasing a bright white light was looking down at us, it, it's a huge snake, I clenched my teeth upon hearing my silver's words, we were in a very bad situation, a demon, there was no way that a snake so large in size wasn't a demon, and considering how it had spoken to us is it a demon with some sort of intellect, I had never heard of or seen such a thing, let alone a demon so massive in size, what do I do, I probably wouldn't be able to even scratch it with my current capabilities. But I had to at least make sure that we silver safely got out of this place, how can I distract it? At that point, the snake spoke, as if it had just read my mind, calm down, child, I am not very hungry right now, it isn't hostile. Upon hearing its words, I wiped my sweat and asked, can you understand me? We are talking to each other after all, how can a demon speak the language of humans? A demon how amusing, the snake moved its tongue, even its tongue looked much bigger than me, we are at a time where entities such as myself are called demons. Hmm. It was a bitter voice, it didn't seem hostile, but I couldn't trust a demon, so I still covered myself with Kai. The snake opened its eyes to reveal a golden gaze and asked me a question, I'm curious, child, how did a child like you, who isn't from the nature, manage to come all the way here, nature? Is it referring to the golden nature? The golden nature disappeared centuries ago, following my words, the snake's eyes widened, then it slowly closed its eyes, Should the giant snake curled up its body, it had only moved slightly but the entire room immediately started shaking the snake was that large. I see, it seems it was inevitable after all, the huge head of the snake slowly came down to the ground, but still, I am curious, even if my power has been degrading, how did you manage to come all the way here? When it said power, does that mean the special magic was set up by this demon? A demon that possessed such inconceivable power how scary is that? How should I answer the demon's question? The truth is, I only ended up here because Wisilha led me all the way, so I didn't have much to say, I happened to coincidentally find it, what, the snake that had been about to respond to my absurd answer suddenly stopped itself and moved its gaze to a different place, the snake was now looking at Wisilva, its golden eyes shined slightly as it looked at Wisilva, because of its size. I couldn't help but feel fear at the massive head staring so intently at us, where Silva seemed to share my fears as she hurriedly moved behind my back, the snake, after observing her for a few seconds, backed off a bit to give us some space, I see so that's what happened, ho. Oh. What did he understand? Child, what was your goal for coming here? The snake suddenly asked, I was stunned for a bit by the snake's question, if this snake had some sort of relationship with the golden nature, would it just let us steal the secret vault and let us get away? I ended up here by coincidence, sir. I unconsciously spoke in a formal tone, the snake swirled its tongue at my answer. I didn't know if I was hallucinating from fear, but it looked to me like the snake was smiling. The snake then spoke, unfortunately, the thing you are looking for no longer belongs here. Fick. He noticed that I came here for the secret vault, following that realization, sweat instantly soaked my back, the snake continued its words, since my days are about to come to an end, this place will also disappear with it, about to end, now I felt like I knew how the Tang clan was able to find this place in the first place, if the snake was being truthful, then the Tang clan had probably found this place after the spatial magic had faded away. Now it makes sense why no one was able to find a unique tree such as this one for so long, but is it saying the truth about nothing being here? If it was, then what did the Lord of the Gaetian clan gain from this place? Child. Yes, sir. I answered nervously to the snake's call. My pride was hurt because I was speaking to a snake in such a formal tone, but now was not the time to bother about such trivialities. What do you think fate is? What kind of shitty question is that sir? It's such an absurd question. I subconsciously responded with my normal way of talking. You idiot. Why would you do that in a situation like this? Ha 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 ha. The snake laughed at my response. The entirety of the room shaking as it laughed. 
You are correct, that was indeed an absurd question from me. Thankfully, the snake didn't seem angry. I wanted to complain about the fact that the snake was the only one asking the questions, but I held myself back. I couldn't afford to do so in my current situation. The snake loosened its curled up body slowly. Why stall it for this long when it is destined to disappear one day? It didn't seem to be talking to me. Who was it talking to? Then, the snake suddenly started shining brightly. It was emanating the white light it had before, but a golden light just like its eyes. As I thought about taking this chance to run away with Waisilbo, something shot out from the snake's opened mouth. It was a golden marble. I picked up the marble that had come to a stop at my feet. Then the snake spoke, Take it, what is this? It's your reward for dealing with a monster such as me, as it was bound to end up in someone's hands sooner or later, it is probably better for you to have it, such is fate, even though the marble had come out of the snake's body, it wasn't covered in any sort of mucus, if I had to make a comparison, it looked sort of like a demonic stone, but it didn't have any ominous feeling around it much unlike demonic stones, instead, it felt luxurious and bright, it seemed holy. Considering you have that inside your body, you will be able to absorb it easier than others would, that. What does it mean by that, before I could process any other thoughts, Hotka suddenly and furiously surged into my body, up following the sudden influx of pain, I dropped to my knees, once again, just like last time, my demonic absorption ability activated without my will, I had let my god down, it seemed that it was actually a demonic stone, but, Weirdly enough, I couldn't feel any demonic kai seeping into my body, the problem instead seemed to be the fact that the kai that was streaming into my body was too much for me to handle, as I struggled with the pain, I felt the hands of Waisilha rub against my back, suddenly, the furious kai that had been streaming into my body calmed down. However, just as I sought to have a sigh of relief, the injected kai met my own fire kai, then began to combine with it, and went on a rampage throughout my body, up, the pain instantly resurfaced, worse than it had earlier been. I felt like I was going to die, was the snake actually trying to kill me? If so, why go through such a roundabout method? Surely gulping me down in one bite would have been much more efficient. Slowly, then rapidly, boom, the only sound in my ears should have been my groaning. But for some reason, I heard an explosion in my head. Was I hallucinating because of the pain? Eventually, the two kids that had been rampaging like crazy formed into one line. After this merged line of Kai reached the center of my body, it suddenly spread throughout my whole body disregarding any semblance of control I tried to establish. It was as if it had suddenly exploded, as the pain got to a point where I could no longer handle it. I blacked out, after Gu Yanqian had fainted. The room was left with only two conscious individuals the snake, and where Silva, the snake laughed after seeing what had happened, I guess it was too much for him to handle, the power of a snake that was about to become a dragon, having absorbed such power, Guyanqian now possessed a kai that was stronger than most others, where Silva put Guyanqian's head on her knees and slowly rubbed his back. The snake then asked her, are you satisfied with this? Boy Silva lifted her head upon hearing the snake's question. Unlike the usual black eyes that Boy Silva usually had, her eyes were now golden. Boy Silva then opened her mouth and said, It's not up to me to be satisfied. Her tone was vastly different from how she usually sounded. The knave it usually present nowhere to be found. The snake responded, sadness evident in its tone. You came all the way here after changing so many things. Is this what you wanted? Why? Can you not comprehend it? It is not that, I comprehend it so much that I feel sorry for you. The snake slowly lowered its body to the ground. Its scales were slowly losing their light, where Silver, still robbing Guyanqian's back, asked, Why did you hand over the jewel you had been protecting for so long to a person you had only met for the first time? I felt whimsical, there is nothing worse than waiting for someone who will never come, so I decided to let go, the snake was reminded of a golden-haired man with a bright smile, someone it would never see again, fate is such a cruel mistress, the scales were now falling to the ground, as soon as the scales touched the ground, they crumbled and disappeared, 
just like the leaves of the white maple tree, not long after, the massive snake disappeared without leaving a single trace. Those were the last moments of the snake who had provided the jewel, where Silver carefully patted Gi Yangchen's head. Even in that situation, you were thinking of protecting me. What kind of person are you? Drip, drip. Tears were slowly falling onto Gi Yangchen's face. You could have just run away. Gi Yangchen, even while shaking, had continued to stand in front of her. I can't understand. Why do all that for me? For a person like me who only holds grudges and contempt and doesn't know anything else, he was reminded of the person who never once opened her mouth for anyone else but herself. I had despised her, I hated her and wanted nothing more than to kill her, that person was none other than me. Give it back now. I heard a voice, where Silver wiped the flowing tears with her hands, sorry, but he'll be borrowing it for a bit longer. Now was not the time, it was still dangerous, just a little more, where Silver carefully placed Gi Yangchen's head on the ground and slowly got up. She wanted to pat his head a bit more, but she knew her place and she felt that it was a selfish act since she was ignoring her guilt. Where Silver slowly stretched her body, it was still the body of a young, fragile girl, but the vessel that was holding her was so big that she had no problem controlling the body. After she was done stretching, where Silver spoke while looking at the door they had come from, come out now, the voice of the little girl was now sharp and cold akin to an awl. The man, shocked at her words, revealed himself, how, since when did you notice that I was here? You thought you'd be able to hide yourself when you lack so much? The man was none other than Machul, Nangan Chinjin's escort, ever since the beginning. Ever since Giyangqian left the Tang clan, where Silver had known that she and Giyangqian were being followed, even if Giyangqian had some experience from his past, there was no way that he would have been able to notice a martial artist that reached the peak realm. I was going to finish it quietly, Machul let out a sigh, he already had his sword drawn, you are a child with good senses, I didn't want to deal with you so I was only going to get rid of Gu Yangqian, but now everything is messed up, is this an order from Namgan, Machul's eyes frowned at Wei Silva's question, how dare you, you have no right to utter such a name through your mouth, Wei Silva remained expressionless in the face of Machul's rage, and then quietly pulled out a dagger. Machul scoffed at her upon seeing the dagger. What are you going to do with that? Wei Silva didn't respond. Machul then thought to himself as he gazed at Wei Silva. Beautiful. She was fascinatingly beautiful. She still seemed a bit young, so it would be better to bring her back to the clan and only get rid of the Ge clan's son, along with the secret vault, and Gu Yangqian's head. This had been a successful trip. After Machul finished his thoughts, he asked Wei Silva, if you don't resist, I won't lay a finger on you. On you. How about it? She will most likely get hurt if she tries to fight me while also trying to protect her master. And that definitely won't make my master happy. Wei Silva, once again, didn't respond. She simply looked down at the dagger. Machul let out a disappointed sigh. Right, if you so insist. Then thud. And Machul let out a dumb sound. Something had fallen near him. Then he felt something strange, an unnatural lack of balance. Machul, with a shaky hand, tried to touch his left shoulder. Cold sweat flowed down his cheek. It wasn't there. The entirety of the left arm that should have been there, wasn't. When he looked down at the ground, he saw that the thing that fell was none other than his own arm. When did you? Machul hadn't even seen where Silver swing. Shut up, where Silver's voice stuck into his ears and Machul finally realized that something was wrong horribly wrong, where Silva took her first step forward, and Machul's breathing instantly roughened, as the distance between them shrank, Machul found that it was getting increasingly harder to breathe, and overwhelming pressure was pressing down on him. Don't open your mouth any more. I don't want him to wake up when he is sleeping so soundly, as she took a step forward, where Silva's hair slowly turned golden, to if you like the novel so far, you can rate it here.